The mother of Marine Sergeant Rafael Peralta kneels at his grave, alone with her grief amid the majesty of this military cemetery overlooking the Pacific. Rosa Peralta's firstborn son was killed in Iraq, and she's imploring him, take good care of your brother Ricardo, who followed him into the Marines. It's more than a mother's prayer. Sergeant Peralta has already saved the lives of other Marines. There's no doubt in my mind there would have been several of us that wouldn't be here right now if he wouldn't have done that. Go, 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 go. Sergeant Nick Jones's squad was clearing a house during the Battle of Fallujah. He and Peralta were standing next to each other when insurgents opened fire at point-blank range. And they were just spraying and praying, shooting as many rounds as they could, trying to hit anything that came through the door. And uh, it just happened to be us standing there. Peralta went down, struck, it turned out, by friendly fire. Then an insurgent tossed a grenade into the room. And landed right next to him, almost right next to his head. Before it even came to a stop, I just saw his arm move up and he grabbed it and just scooped it underneath his body. Peralta was nominated for the Medal of Honor, the nation's highest award for valor above and beyond the call of duty. That's what separates him from me. My initial reaction was to turn my body away from it, and his reaction was to pull it underneath his body and lay down on top of it. The Medal of Honor is the highest award for bravery a president can bestow. In 10 years of fighting in both Iraq and Afghanistan, only eight Medals of Honor have been awarded. Compare that to Vietnam, the last war of comparable length, memorialized here at the Vietnam Wall. In the 10 years of Vietnam, 247 medals of honor were awarded. There is a huge gap, and it needs to be fixed. John Wheeler, a Vietnam veteran and chairman of the committee which built the wall, recognizes today's wars are different from his. But even so, the gap is so big, it speaks for itself. Maybe we're just not being brutally honest about it. Maybe these wars just aren't up to it the way World War II was, Vietnam was. You know, the infantry fight up close doesn't change over time. That brutal close fight is the same war to war to war. In Iraq and Afghanistan, the enemy frequently attacks with remote-controlled roadside bombs. As a result, the Pentagon says, there's not as much soldier against soldier fighting. Well, I don't buy the concept that, well, this war is not conducive to extraordinary deeds. That's not true at all. They're in combat from the minute they arrive to the minute they leave. Paul Bucca received the Medal of Honor in Vietnam for leading his company against a much larger enemy force in a three-day battle in which he single-handedly took out a machine gun nest. In case you think the medal is about glory, look at him weeping in the aftermath of the battle. He has just seen the bodies of his men. And I still don't believe I deserve the Medal of Honor. I have 10 men on this black shiny wall here in Washington, D.C., who promised me they would trust me. In exchange, I promised I would bring them home. I didn't. As for the bravery he displayed that day, I doubt that there's one Medal of Honor recipient who would say he was doing anything other than his job. It sounds like you almost don't have a choice in the matter. I think that's actually true. Did Rafael Peralta have a choice? He had been shot in the head, creating an element of doubt he could have deliberately reached for that grenade. Despite sworn eyewitness accounts from Jones and four other Marines, an autopsy found Peralta's head wound was nearly instantly fatal, and he could not have executed any meaningful motions. After a five-member panel reviewed the forensic evidence, Peralta was denied the Medal of Honor. I would love for one of those people to talk to me. They never questioned you? No. Apparently they're going to take the word of, of a doctor who performed an autopsy and says this could not have happened over my word, which says this did happen, and I saw it with my own eyes. I do not believe that scientists can discern with certainty what occurs at the moment or just before the moment of death. I have seen such extraordinary things from men in combat that my reaction would be, it's impossible, only to realize it occurred. 
As far as Buka is concerned, to deny Peralta or anyone else the Medal of Honor solely on the basis of forensics flies in the face of what it stands for. That's what it says, above and beyond the call of duty, extraordinary. Which means it should defy some of the logic of objectivity. Peralta was awarded the second highest medal, the Navy Cross. That citation reads, Without hesitation and with complete disregard for his own personal safety, Sergeant Peralta reached out and pulled the grenade to his body, absorbing the brunt of the blast and shielding fellow Marines only feet away. Exactly the same action for which he was denied the Medal of Honor. Rosa Peralta can't bring herself to accept the Navy Cross and perhaps no medal could ease her pain. But the Medal of Honor resonates far beyond any one person. We need Medal of Honor recipients. It's important to the nation. It's important even more to the troops who participate in the war. It's not only validation, but it's a recognition that among this group of soldiers, there have been deeds and acts which are above and beyond the call of duty. There may be a shortage of Medals of Honor for Iraq and Afghanistan. But Sergeant Rafael Peralta is proof there is no shortage of valor. He went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the enemy, and he saved our lives.